Hello, welcome to Recapping with Delora and Ashley. Please follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Recapping Podcast. Also, comment, rate, and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. We're on all the things. We would love to hear your ratings of the movies and shows we review. Email us your audio file to recappingpodcast at gmail.com and we will play it during the show. Or DM us on Instagram and we will post and read it on air. Thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you. What's up? What's up? What's up, Delora? Hey, Ashley. We are back on the mic. My apologies, guys, for our impromptu break. I had to deal with some Florida weather and make some unexpected, you know, travel rearrangements for that wedding for my cousin that I've been talking about for a couple episodes now. So yes, congratulations. Yes, congratulations to my cousin Jessica and her husband, Tim, aka the Robinsons. So glad we were able to make it out there. It was a beautiful wedding. She was a gorgeous, gorgeous bride and just happy to, to be around family. Shout out to my Aunt Paula, who I found out listens to the pod. So Aunt Paula, if you're listening to this, what's up? Hi. <laughs> but Delora, guess what also happened while I was in Arizona? I think we all took a trip. I think we all took a trip as well back to Wakanda because y'all know one thing I said that I was not missing baby was opening weekend of Black Panther Wakanda forever and I did not. I went to the 10 a.m. first showing of the day. On Friday, baby. Okay, Wakanda forever. Delora, no ever, spoilers. Ever, 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 ever. No spoilers, but give me your top tier thoughts on this Black Panther Wakanda forever. Ashley, Ashley, Ashley. My initial thoughts. Here we go. I didn't cry as much as I thought I would. Mm, okay. I did cry. But not as much. The action was phenomenal. Mm-hmm. I want to be Okoye when I grow up. And I've said that <laughs> since day one. I've said that since day one. Yeah. When I even knew what her name was. The general of the Dora Malaje. Yes, please. Angela freaking Bassett. Mm-hmm. It's the lip quiver. It's the intensity. It's the the poise, the grace, the majesty, sis brought it. That line from the trailer of have I not given everything, even though I had already seen it, hit me, hit me Girl. so hard at that theater. Girl. I was like, mom, she has, she really, she really has given everything. Last and certainly not least, we need to have a conversation about no more. Because is he the bad guy? <laughs> yes. <laughs> but his intensity, Ashley, I was like grasping, grasping Clutching my your pearls. pearls. <laughs> <laughs> I, I could like, not. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> No spoilers, but let's just say I'm not that mad at him. <laughs> mm, okay. All right. So do you think it lived up to the hype of the original? I think it did a really good job. I think this film is just as epic as the first one for different reasons. I think what they did with the story was extremely impressive. Mm-hmm. And part of the reason why I'm not upset at Namor or Namor, like everyone says from the comics, I talk about his intensity, but his look, his whole ensemble, (laughs) (laughs) fire, fire, fire. (laughs) Shout out to Miss Ruth. Okay. Yeah. Because it's the headdress for me. It's the golds and the greens and the aqua. It just was 
fire. Like him and his people. They shit on Aquaman aesthetic. Like shit on it. 1000%. The fact that it was steeped in real culture, you know, pre-colonialism, the fact that there's still a conversation, right? Like the imagination of where would we be if we weren't colonized Mm -hmm. yep and we're able to utilize our own resources for our you know survival our civilization yeah love you jason but yeah they they got y'all on this one marvel takes that dub again but man my overall thoughts first of all worth the wait Yes. worth the um rush push to get there surprised me in a couple of ways that I cannot say I was quite ready for absolutely when Rihanna came on at the end it hit me more than I expected you would have thought I had never heard that song before I told you it was gonna happen I knew it I was like she they want us wrecked at the end of this freaking movie yeah I didn't Wrecked. I didn't cry, but everything was just so emotional. Like I felt everything in my chest. You know what I mean? Yes. Deep. And to your point, did this live up to the original? First of all, shout out to Miss Hannah Beekler, who once again created <sighs> such These majesty worlds. and such World beauty. Building. Yeah, it was fantastical. It was gorgeous. And Bravo. I was here for every minute of it. But I think this was a great companion to the first movie. I think there was a lot of factors that went yes. into this second one. You had the loss of Chadwick. You had the 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 fact that T- T'Challa is gone, literally has passed away as well, and rebuilding and recreating what that story would then look like with the kingdom of Wakanda and balancing that grief with the Marvel Cinematic Universe and what we've come to know and expect of these films. I think they did yes. a seamlessly beautiful job um, in that regard. So I'm curious to see what the future holds for this series, but y'all did it. Y'all did it. Y'all did that thing. And bravo to Ryan Coogler. Mm-hmm. A young Black man doing the damn thing. Yeah. Yeah. Like, what he did for the first movie is mind-blowing. And to come and do it again. And again, with love... so much up against them this time that but wasn't you, there originally. You see the excellence in this film. You feel it. It was an experience. And I just want to say bravo, sir. Bravo. The, I mean, he's doing... He's doing some extraordinary things. Yeah. Black Panther. Black Panther is definitely my favorite series within the Marvel Universe now. And that is not an easy feat. And I don't just say that because I'm black or do I? But no, I mean it. (laughs) I definitely mean it. Um, Looking at a CNN article, Wakanda Forever had... A opening weekend domestically of $180 million, 330 globally so far. It bested the Hunger Games catching fire as the highest grossing debut ever for the month of November. So not surprising, made Mm -hmm. slightly above projections, and I'm sure it will go on to break that billion dollar threshold. So I'm going to see it again. That's for sure. It was glorious. If you have not seen it yet, I do not know what you are waiting for. You must you must like to be spoiled because there definitely must be a million spoilers (laughs) out on these internets at this point. And that's what I was not about to have happen to me. So be sure to go check out the movie if you haven't, because it was everything. Speaking of Marvel. One of the reasons why I felt bad that my travels interrupted our recording last week is because something major happened with a member of the Marvel family. Yes. Our favorite Chris, your boo-boo-boo, Chris the Evans, was crowned people's sexiest man alive, Delora. 
Last year, we had Paul Rudd. How did this compare to you when this announcement was made? (laughs) Ashley, when I saw the announcement, I said, finally, (laughs) finally, (laughs) my bae, Chris Evans, (laughs) Captain America, has been crowned sexiest man alive. I am here for it. I think he's had a piece of my heart since what's your number? You remember that rom com? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He was the douchey neighbor with a with a heart of gold. <laughs> Typical rom com tropes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he's been here all along. He's been here all along. Um, This just brings me joy. I think this is wonderful. He's been really working post Captain America, voice of Buzz Lightyear. Check out that recap. Mm -hmm. Um, Villain in The Gray Man. The Gray Man. Check that recap. (laughs) Yep. We show him love. We do. We really do. We really do. So... I'm here. I'm here for the Bostonian. What I will say when I saw this come out, as I said, oh, thank God, because (laughs) (laughs) some years I'm just like Blake Shelton. I just don't get it. Like, I just I'm not. That was a rough year. I'm not understanding the rationale. Wasn't like The Rock before him and then Michael Bay Jordan after him or something? It was something like that. I know Michael, I think, took it from Blake. Paul Rudd, what I will always give Paul Rudd is Paul Rudd has this adorable quality about him that even if I don't find him sexy, I think he's adorable. Like there's Absolutely. that. He's adorable. He, he's, he's attractive on, on a level that may not be solely physical. I mean, he's yes. not ugly. No, but he's adorable. He's very endearing, you know? But Chris Evans... Is definitely bringing the sexy back to the list this year. Yes, yes, yes. He's yes, bringing yes. the sexy back. So that's why I was like, ah, okay. We're making sense again, people. We're making sense. I'm already putting it in my bed for next year, though. Who you got? Jonathan Majors. Ah, I can see that. Especially if Body- three... Adi Adi. If and Creed like comes out movies. and is, yeah, but if Creed especially comes out and shatters and like some of those other big budgets, yeah, he's gonna we don't make, even yeah. need Creed. We have Ant Man, Ashley. Like, I forgot. He, girl, he is his movie roster coming yeah. up is a thing of legend. Like, he has the one out now. And like I said, a lot of anticipation around his marvel appearances and to your point creed so no that's a good point i'm glad you brought that up because i forgot that that trailer was in the black pit when i went saw black panther and i forgot that we were bringing that character back from obviously when we saw him introduced in loki and i was just thinking about what he's starring starring in which in my mind is creed starring other another you know sexiest man alive michael b jordan so that makes total sense though because the Marvel train keeps the movie theaters right now on the track. So, and I think he's the big bad in what phase are we in? Phase four, phase five, or four. something? I think we're still in four. I think we're still in four. Marvel heads, mm-hmm. y'all can correct me. I think we're still in mm-hmm. four. But yeah, I'm. I was excited. Oh, speaking of that, were there any other trailers during Black Panther of films that are coming up? Like, what do you think of the Avatar trailer? Does that excite you? As it's about to come out in December. David and I were seriously sitting there like y'all waited this long for me to care about this these sequels coming out like the first one was major we even saw it together that's how long we've been together (laughs) we saw it together it was a you know cinematic experience right Mm -hmm. and in that moment in that you know what they like to say on the internet you had to be there you had to be there during that hype what that trailer gave me wasn't enough to really make me want to leave the house unless <laughs> I feel you though I hear people say you know what this 3D experience is absolutely worth it let's check it out 
but as of right now, I'm good. How about you? And see, I wasn't even on the first movie, Avatar Train. It's shocking to say that I didn't even sit and watch the entire movie in one sitting until COVID. Is really? like my, yeah, I never once saw it in theaters. My I attention never... span wasn't there when I ever tried to watch it before. But you would think that it would yeah. be something I would have consumed, would have ate up. And then when I finally watched it, I was like, I hate the story. Like, I don't want to see these white people trying to come over here and colonize another another freaking planet. Exactly. And I'm glad that you said that because I, I don't know why I said I never. I have not seen that movie since it came out. So for me, I have been extremely removed from it, you know? I think I couldn't get a good grasp during the trailer, which to their credit, I do always say trailers give away too much what the storyline is for this second Avatar. So that's another thing I was like, I, it's beautiful to see again, to be in this world, but I don't, I can't really get a grasp of what the story is going to be. So it didn't move me either, but just curious. Cause I know we had a couple biggies that played during the film. So Chris Evans, congratulations on your sexiest man alive title. Congratulations. It was a mantle that I'm glad to see you step into. I'm so <laughs> proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Delora, let's get into our headlines and our hot topics for today's episode. All right, guys. So our first one up is Princess Diaries 3. This has been long discussed, long awaited for all the folks who are fans, at least of the original, because the second one did not move me. But <laughs> for the sake of the original... And mind you, another Chris is in that one, and I completely forgot about it. Well, I think I do too, because I did not love the second movie. Like, Chris Pine being in it doesn't, uh, yeah. it didn't add anything. It didn't subtract yep. anything, but didn't add anything. So, it's finally been announced that a new Princess Diaries movie, Princess Diaries 3, is in the works. Uh, the script is being penned by Adrita Mercuji, and the producer is going to be Deborah Martin Chase again who was producing partner with Whitney Houston as we know yes 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 this article I'm reading from the Hollywood Reporter is saying that it is a continuation of the Anne Hathaway led series of films rather than a reboot which I'm happy about because I don't think I'm ready for anybody else to step into the shoes of Mia Thermopolis (laughs) exactly They're saying that she's still not attached yet in terms of a deal, but she's spoken publicly about her desire for a continuation. So I couldn't imagine that she would not still be a part of this project. Do you have any- She was just on The View and they were too busy asking her about a Devil Wears Prada reboot instead of this one. Hmm. Maybe it's just been so long that people thought that it wasn't going to happen. But as we know, with Hocus Pocus and some of those that the fandom's there, it's going to come back eventually. So do you have any thoughts on what the storyline may be about for this one? When we had the second one, it was about her royal engagement. So do you think this is going to be about what the next generation? Maybe some she's had some babies and we're going to see the kids stepping into I their royal titles? Absolutely need the following. I need a wedding. I need babies. I need queen mother, you know, still doing, doing her thing. Julie Andrews. It'd be nice to have people from like maybe the first movie to show up again, like a Mandy Moore situation. Mm, Not exactly sure (laughs) how that'll work, but I think that'll be a lot of fun. I still sing that song, Stupid Cupid, you're a real mean guy. Oh I don't know God. why. That just <laughs> sticks, that hole with the three girls, that just sticks in my head. Oh my God, I thought you were going to say, love you like candy. No, I, I don't know how. <laughs> no, no. I love that song from that first movie. I have watched the first movie so many times, so many times. Loved it. Probably more than I. I mean, okay. <laughs> But yeah, I'm excited for this. I think it'll be fun to step back into these shoes. It's going to be oh, interesting to see who Raven directs was it. in the second one, right? They had like a sleepover. Yeah, she was a royalty from another uh, yeah. re- region. So she was in it. But yeah, I'm, I need for her to show up in the third one too. I'm curious to see who's going to direct it since Gary Marshall has passed. Um, hopefully mm-hmm. they pass the torch to somebody who carries it. Because Gary Marshall has a very distinctive 
touch when it comes to like the rom coms and the lighter, Absolutely. you know, he some did of those a, movies. An I love. Amazing job. Yeah. Yeah. Never been kissed. Hocus Pocus. Pretty woman, baby. So I, uh, I'm curious to see what they do with it, but I am excited. The second one did not push me away from the franchise. So we'll see what happens. Our next quick headline Prayers up for Jay Leno, who has been hospitalized for significant burns to his face and his hand. It says in this article I'm reading from CNN, actually, it's his face, his hands, his chest, and that the burns were fairly significant. He, as we most, a lot of people know, shouldn't say most people, a lot of people who follow anything about him knows he has like a fleet of cars he's an avid car collector and apparently he was working underneath a vehicle when he was burned by a gasoline fire they're saying his injuries are serious but his condition is good they expect him to make a full recovery and they said he's walking around he's cracking jokes and he's being incredibly kind to the hospital staff so i'm glad to hear that his spirits are up and definitely prayers out to him and his family um, for this incident you know what like kind of made me feel weird when this first came out because I wasn't sure you know what the extent of his injuries were I was going to say it would be just as weird to me as like when Paul Walker died in a car related accident given that Paul Walker was a part of a specific mm-hmm. franchise dealing with cars like what it'd be crazy if Jay Leno who's known as this avid car collector mm-hmm. is taken out by his car yeah definitely sounds like a freak accident i'm glad he's in good spirits i am curious on the extent of his injuries but yeah when i heard that it was from one of his you know collectible cars i was like oh my goodness what could what could have possibly happened yeah yeah i mean in terms of like celebrities who have an affinity for their car collection i think the only one who can um give him a run for his money is jerry seinfeld right i believe so (laughs) um but yeah very sad and i just hope he's okay Mm -hmm. and that's as far as we know because it's not like we're going into celebrities car closets and garages you know where's mcb cribs these days i want to see some of these new celebs some of their homes we used to get all those glimpses back in the day so Anyway, definitely prayers up to Jay and his family. Let's move on to our next quick headline, Delora. I shouldn't even call this a quick headline because this has been headline after headline after headline. And that is Twitter, which is in shambles. And Elon Musk and whatever it is he's over there doing. When I had this on our list last week, I said, stay or leave. Because... (laughs) You are more ingrained into Twitter than I am. I am such a casual user of Twitter. I literally probably get on it once a week. And that's usually only to check what's trending for this podcast (laughs) for when we talk. So first of all, when Elon Musk took over, were you someone who thought, oh, I got to get off this platform? Or have you wrote it out to see what was going to happen? I am still on the platform. My days on the platform is numbered because it is absolutely a shit show. It's giving mean girls post, you know, discovery of the slam book. You know what I mean? (laughs) It's like everyone running around like their heads are chopped off. So what has kept me and what has kept most people on Twitter is, in fact, Black Twitter (laughs) and our reactions to things. Um, I have curated my feed in a way that gives me all the best stuff on Black Twitter from pop culture to politics. And so I couldn't leave before the midterms. And the way Elon has been running this organization is another example of people giving a rich white man keys to something that he has no idea what he's doing. Mm. And it's like, what will we learn? (laughs) Just because he's eccentric and yet has accumulated great wealth does not really translate into being an effective leader. Right. 
Um, I think I will leave though if you know who is able to join. Hmm. Got it. Yeah, like I said, I'm such a passive user that I almost have felt like this doesn't involve me. But obviously, I have to decide whether or not I would continue to have any form of a presence on there as well. The latest news is that he has given employees until when you guys are listening to this this evening to commit to extremely hardcore work or else leave the company. He said, going forward to build a breakthrough Twitter 2.0 and succeed in an increasingly competitive world, we will need to be extremely hardcore. This will mean working long hours at high intensity. Only exceptional performance will constitute a passing grade. He also said Who's that- Who's working like that anymore? He Seriously. Also, he also said that those who fail to do so by 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time will receive three months severance. This comes after he already had- debacle after debacle right he had the issue of when he first came on he got rid of a bunch of folks laid off a bunch of folks um including folks at you know multiple levels within the organization then he just had this whole blue check fiasco that yes. he he you know kind of redacted after two days about the verification all of that so i'm just not sure what his logic or thoughts are at this particular time like is his is is he really trying to save twitter or is he trying to burn it to the ground it's firing half of your staff and then emailing them questions about how they did their work like yeah it's him complaining about working really long hard hours and saying oh this isn't sustainable and it's not something i'm interested in doing it's so ridiculous and so self induce inducing, you know what I mean? I have no empathy for him, but yeah, I just, I'm actually more upset at the people who were in charge of Twitter before him who because their two cent and confidence behind him taking over. It's like money isn't really everything. Like, yeah, he had the money to buy it, but should he? It gives me the Jeff Goldblum <laughs> quote from Jurassic Park. It's like, we can bring back the dinosaurs. The question is, should we? <laughs> I love me some Jeff Goldblum too. And why is he like Bay in his older age? Like, he is giving silver fox realness. I love me some Jeff Goldblum. I'll These leave days. it there. I'll leave it there. Yeah, I mean, he, uh, you know, the top execs who got pushed out when he eliminated the board directors, he laid off most, like half of his staff, all these things. To me, again, my question is, are you really trying to save it or are you trying to burn it to the ground? Because it seems like whatever he was doing with Tesla, yeah, there may have been issues that came up. There may have been lawsuits that came up, but it never felt this extreme. It feels like he's coming in so hot and heavy handed. But he, these antics were documented before. It just, it didn't have impact everyone like Twitter, right? And because he um, built Tesla from the ground up versus right, this is something so, he's coming in a, and grabbing I was from somebody say, else. They were used to this chaotic work culture this where, energy yeah and i was gonna say not that extreme like girl the racism is so bad there have been million dollar settlements so but yeah a mess i'm just hoping for the best for the employees i guess is the last thing i really want to say about this um i have a friend who works for twitter and i just think that it's very unsettling i just had seen a post from the brown ambition podcast ladies who i know you love about the fact that there's no such thing as job Absolutely. security you know what i mean like that's an yep. illusion but i think it is when you have situations like this this is such an extreme when it comes to like how you may feel about your workplace and like a hostile work environment and the un the the way you can feel so unsettled with fourth quarter layoffs that are already happening across the board in tech and you know Amazon set to lay out people Facebook is laying out people all this stuff and this has be seemingly been the most unsettling just because you never know which way this man is about to go 
He could wake up tomorrow and say, actually, I'm shutting down. I'm shuttering the entire company. I'm going to build something else from scratch. Yep. Yep. So I can only imagine. I hope for the best for all of the employees. It's really um, sad to see that this was the result of all of this discussion that had been happening and building up to this takeover. So wishing for the best for you guys, for sure. But as far as my fate of Twitter, we'll see, because I really don't care about that platform <laughs> of, of the ones that I've been heavily involved in. It will be it will be Instagram for me that will give me ugh, the heartache. But anyway, let's move on, Delora. It's time for hot, hot, hot topics. Our first one up, Dave Chappelle is back in the headlines for his Saturday Night Live monologue, which... According to the article I'm looking at from CNN, Dave Chappelle's SNL monologue sparks backlash as being anti-Semitic. Dave Chappelle's comments about the Jewish community are being slammed. The Anti-Defamation League chief executive officer took to Twitter to criticize the comedian and NBC saying we shouldn't expect Dave Chappelle to serve as society's moral compass, but disturbing to see NBC SNL not just normalize, but popularize anti-Semitism. Why are Jewish sensitivities denied or diminished at almost every turn? Why does our trauma trigger applause? During his 15 minutes, Dave Chappelle basically addressed the controversy going on with Kanye, with Kyrie, over the things that they've said and the things that they've posted and inserted his own jokes and commentary in between. Did you watch his SNL monologue and what did you think about it? I saw part of it. I didn't finish it. I don't know, man. I, I will say it was funny when he said, Kanye got into so much trouble. Kyrie got in trouble too. <laughs> the funniest joke to me was about Melania being a Bond girl that even Bond couldn't trust. Like th- that that joke got me. That was pretty funny. <laughs> but anyway. Um, but yeah, I'm just exhausted. I mean, Dave Chappelle is really turning out to be a controversial figure stemming from his return and his critiques on the LGBTQIA community. Mm -hmm. And so adding what he has to say about Jewish people, I know he was trying to be smart and how he framed the jokes and things along those lines but definitely didn't land and still very unclear on what his intentions were therefore you know not funny (laughs) not funny i think he's throwing his hat into the ring of something that he already knows is on fire right like he said that the thing that kanye said he wouldn't expect for somebody to say in this climate and yet you're addressing this in this climate as well you're going onto a national well-known platform and you know this and you're adding your commentary to a situation that you already know is really 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 hot button issue at the moment and I think it's sad just the state that we're at with so many things. And this is just another thing, I guess, for me, where even my Uber driver, one of my Uber drivers was asking me my thoughts and my opinions about all of this. And to your point, it's it's exhausting. I don't want to see such division. I don't want to see such, um, you know, anger thinking that, you know, there's, a division now between the black community and the Jewish community that seems to just be amplified the more people want to have commentary about this like I think it's important to when someone feels uh, that someone says something that was upsetting or racist or whatever did you take the time to understand their thoughts about that and why that seems to be have to always turn into a us versus them it's it's tiring. It's a tiring commentary and it makes me sad. So hopefully there will be some level of resolution from this, maybe just with the wheels of the new cycle turning, right? 
things will come up that will trump this and we'll continue to move forward. Um, but other comedians have already spoken their piece about this. John Stewart addressed it and said that he doesn't believe censorship and penalties are the way to end anti-Semitism. Um, you've had Jerry Seinfeld, who's weighed in a little bit as well, said it's worth the conversation. So, you know, we'll see if there's any real consequence for Dave Chappelle in particular. But again, I just think he threw his hat into the ring of a topic and an issue that was already so hot in these streets. So, yep, guys, Grammy nominations for the 65th Annual Awards were announced on Tuesday. Many favorites were nominated. Kendrick Lamar, Adele, Harry Styles, Lizzo, Taylor Swift, Beyonce, Bad Bunny, and Brandi Carlisle dominated. Beyonce leads this year's nominees with nine for Renaissance, now having a total of 88 nominations to her credit, which puts her in a tie with Jay-Z, her hubby, for the most nominations of all time. Let me just take a stop and take a minute on that. Who does that? Yeah, I thought she passed him um, with her nine nom- um, nominations, so she's tied. There are conflicting reports. I've seen the ones yes. that said she surpassed them, and I've also seen the ones that say that they are now tied. It's saying that they are now tied on an article that I'm reading from Yahoo Music. So mm-hmm. that's the source material, but I have seen the conflicting. But regardless, whether she passed him by one or they are tied, Delora, who <laughs> does that? When I said before yeah. that Blue Ivy is the daughter of Beyonce and Jay-Z. This is what I mean. This is what Mm. I mean. Like both of your parents are not stars, right? That's not the word. They are superstars in their respective, (laughs) in their respective genres. Like it's unbelievable to me. And you gave me the hard task of thinking about power couples in music, but just power couples in general. I was like Brad and Angie and their children. Um, and then David Beckham and um Victoria. Victoria. Yeah, that's why I said in music. I was like, I could yeah. think about it in other, you know, places and entertainment, but in music, name me a bigger power couple oh, than Jay-Z. Beyonce. Well, they're not that big, but for their genre, um, Faith Hill and her fine. Fine husband. Tim McGraw. <laughs> I'm like with because you remember, I'll tell you this really quick. I used to think like, oh my goodness, he must not be that cute because he's always wearing that hat. Well, he took off that hat. He's he's just fine. He's good looking. <laughs> I don't think I fully appreciated Tim McGraw until I started seeing him act. And I was like, oh, that man's talented. Because I'm not, I'm just not a big country music, at least on the guys. Like I think I have more of an appreciation mm-hmm. for female country music yes. artists than i do male Gary underwood yeah they have they got some they got some pipes they those those female feel. yeah they got some pipes but Shania. when i saw him start acting i was like oh okay got it you're very talented sir so yeah but i mean it's jay-z and beyonce that's all i mean it's just it's wild to me but anyway um also uh for album of the year bad bunnies album marks the first time that a latin music album has ever been nominated in the big four category so that is major as well i wish i i wish i understood what he was saying i mean that doesn't (laughs) that doesn't stop me necessarily because i love rosalia and she speaks spanish the whole time but still i love i love his popularity his fans like they adore him he's very attractive as well so that never hurts (laughs) What's funny is, so when I was flying, because I flew American, usually I don't get to fly some of the bigger airline carriers, guys, because of the airport I like to fly out of, a smaller airport, but I flew American, and I thought they were going to have TVs and I could watch movies. Of course not. You had to use your phone. You had to pay for Wi-Fi. I wasn't doing all that. So I watched Bullet Train behind the shoulder of a fellow passenger now did could she give me the courtesy of putting on the subtitles so i could really enjoy the film no so i just had to watch all the action couldn't hear a word of it but bad bunny was in it right so Mm -hmm. i i enjoyed seeing him in that capacity too because i don't listen to his music like that so again sometimes Mm -hmm. when you see somebody in another capacity you're like oh okay (laughs) 
I see you, baby. Um, so I appreciated and enjoyed him recently for well, that. You're in but... luck. He's a superhero coming up soon. So okay. Oh, that's right. That was big news as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah, he's making history left and right. I guess is the moral of that story. But uh, let's go down the list of some of these major major categories. We have record of the year. Don't Shut Me Down by ABBA, Easy on Me, Adele, Break My Soul, Beyonce, Good Morning Gorgeous, Mary J. Blige out here, You and Me on the Rock, Brandy Carlisle featuring Lucius, Woman, Doja Cat, Bad Habits, Steve Lacey, The Heart Part 5, Kendrick Lamar, About Damn Time, Lizzo, As It Was, Harry Styles. Any predictions for Record of the Year? Record of the Year, I will tell you what my favorites are. Mm -hmm. Um, As It Was, is a banger uh woman by doja cat is a banger and <sighs> easy on me was one of adele's better songs off of 30 mm-hmm. but 30 didn't hit the way it needed to hit for me mm. bring my soul is not my favorite song from renaissance i will say that it's not my fave either but i'm damn sure pulling for beyonce because i love that woman to death if it's not beyonce winning then i want mary j blige to win i really okay. do good morning gorgeous i really do that song I was played so many times on the radio nation i <laughs> yes. appreciate that affirmation and you know my girl her wrote the song so i'm pulling for them song of the year a b d c e f u sarah davis gail and dave Pendergrass. I love that song, by the way. <laughs> a B C D E F U. Never heard it. Never heard of it. But I'm glad you enjoy it. <laughs> About damn time, Melissa Lizzo Jefferson. I see you, girl. I'm not going to name all the songwriters for all of these guys. I apologize, but you know who you are. All too well, Taylor Swift. As it was, Harry Styles. Bad habit, Steve Lacey. Break My Soul, Beyonce, Easy On Me, Adele, God Did, DJ Khaled featuring Rick Ross, Lil Wayne, Jay-Z, John Legend, and Friday, The Heart Part 5, Kendrick Lamar, and Just Like That, Bonnie Raitt. Who you got for Song of the Year? Uh, This is difficult. (laughs) I'm going to go with As It Was or Break My Soul. So what I Mm. will give Break My Soul is, it obviously grew on me, duh right and it meant something in terms of the cultural moment um that it came out right Mm -hmm. it was preparing us to have fun and so you know to be free of bullshit is you know what she say it's time to quit my job it's time to Mm -hmm. (laughs) all the things she was so timely it's like beyonce is living up in the cloud yet she can still relate to us mere mortals somehow (laughs) and so because of that i'm throwing bring my soul in the in the ring as well okay in this category i'm 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 pulling for god did and let me explain so rap is not my favorite genre of music never has been but i think when it comes to songwriting rap does probably does not get the awards and things that it should because rap is poetry right songwriting in general can be seen as poetry but rap is a specific art form that focuses on the lyrics so in my opinion especially the hype about jay-z's lyric and now all of that give god did and this award that's just my personal opinion but there you go so album of the year Voyage, ABBA, 30, Adele, Un Verano, Sinti, Bad Bunny, Renaissance, Beyonce, Good Morning Gorgeous, Deluxe, Mary J. Blige, In These Silent Days, Brandy Carlisle, Music of the Spheres, Coldplay, Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers, Kendrick Lamar, Special, Lizzo, Harry's House, Harry Styles. Album of the Year, who you got? Tip, tip, tip on hardwood floors. Tin, tin, tin across the board. This better be. This better be her year. Okay? Face card never declines. My God. Eat it. Eat it. Eat it. Eat it. Eat it. (laughs) Yummy, yummy, yummy. Make sure me eat it. Yeah. Renaissance. Flat out. For 800, Alex. 
Better be Beyonce's year. Better be. Best new artists, Anita, Omar Apollo, Domi and J.D. Beck, Mooney Long, Samara Joy, Lotto, Maniskin, Toby Wigwe, Molly Tuttle, Wet Leg. There are a lot of these artists. I have no idea who they are. I think I know four of them. I know three offhand. I'm rooting for Toby. He's independent. I he love Toby. Fire, fire yeah. songs. I'm probably and his gonna, visuals. Yeah. Yes. I'm probably gonna throw my hat to Mooney just because yeah. she yeah, been out she's here. Been in the game. Yeah, she been out here. <laughs> yep. She been out here, and I know a lot of um, black R and B female singers felt snubbed this year so mm. let's give it to mooney or is it money money long or mooney long i don't want to say it incorrectly i don't know if i've ever heard her say it out loud best pop solo performance easy on me adele moscow mule bad bunny woman doja cat bad habit steve lacy about damn time lizzo as it was harry styles woman by Doja Cat. I love, love this song. I love this album. It was one of my hidden gems at the beginning of this year. Um, yeah, about their time that. is good, but I I love Lizzo, but I don't think this album and even the single is as strong as her last one, personally. Mm. So but I'm I'm excited she's getting love. For and then, sure. of course, as it was, was a moment in time for me that I adore. So those are, Doja Cat would be my number one as it was, would be my number two. Okay. I'll give it to Lizzo or Adele in this category. I wouldn't be mad about either one of them taking it home. Let's move down a bit. Let's go to best rap album. We have God Did, DJ Khaled, I Never Liked You, Future, Come Home, The Kids Miss You, Jack Harlow, Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers, Kendrick Lamar. It's almost dry. Push a T. I'm thinking DJ Khaled for the win. I think Kendra might actually win because he was supposed to win however many years ago, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think those two would be my tops. I'm not a future fan. I haven't listened to much of Jack Harlow's music. Pusher T, I still haven't really given him much of a chance outside of his work with him and Malice. So I couldn't really comment on that. So in my personal with you. opinion, when it comes to Jack Harlow, his other projects are better than this one. Okay. Let's move down to R&B. Best R&B performance, Virgo's Groove, Beyonce. Hurt Me So Good, Jasmine Sullivan. Over, Lucky Day, Here With Me, Mary J. Blige featuring Anderson Pack. Hours and Hours, Mooney Long. I think based off of social media popularity, Hours and Hours should win, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but Vir Virgo's groove is insane vocally. So, yeah. Yeah. I don't. And you know, I but want then Beyonce. You have Jasmine Sullivan to. Yeah, I want Beyonce to win for. There was a category in there that had plastic off the sofa. I can't remember yeah, which best one. Best traditional R and B performance. Yeah, that's the one yeah. I want to win. <laughs> yeah, that so. one actually would make me. Yeah, because plastic off the sofa. That Those that runs. in. I won't even attempt on the mic. You guys, yeah. those runs. <laughs> Last up, let's just talk about best R&B album. We have Good Morning Gorgeous, Deluxe, Mary J. Blige, Breezy, Deluxe Album, Chris Brown, Black Radio 3, Robert Glasper, Candy Drip, Lucky Day, Watch the Sun, PJ Morton. Oh, I love PJ Morton. I don't know. Um, and actually, this Chris Brown album isn't that bad either. <laughs> I have not attempted to listen to that whole album. He yep. like puts out 25 songs yep. on the album. I'm like, sir. Mm -mm. I, I think the problem with his albums, I think we had this conversation. They're not cohesive. It's not like yep. a, a journey. It's mm -hmm. like, oh, that sounds good. Let's throw it on this album. Exactly. It's not, you're not giving me a story you're not giving right, me a narrative a 
throughout. Yeah, you're just putting yes. a bunch of possible <laughs> singles onto a compilation. That's what I feel like with his last, what, two or three that he's dropped. So I'm going to give it to yeah, Mary, J. J. Blige. Mary J. Blige. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. Even though Lucky Day just dropped the video for fucking Sound, which is my favorite song Ooh. off of his album. But it has you feeling like away because he's getting down in a church and it's like, whoo. In my spirit, I feel so conflicted about Are this. you saying he's doing sexy things? Yes. At church? Putting his hands on the walls with the crosses next to him, honey. Yes. Confessing to a priest. It was a lot. The video was a lot. I was like, I feel very conflicted. But wow. one could say that the art is supposed to make you feel conflicted because it's probably about the sinful, lustful nature that we feel even in the church because you know lucky they grew up in church so that's a part of i was of... gonna say he probably walked in on somebody doing this mess, no it's so it based know. on a true story so i don't know <laughs> if it's his or somebody else's honey i don't i don't know i don't a know mess. but i still love that song anyway so that's our thoughts guys for grammy's noms we'll see what happens this year at the awards as we know silk sonic removed themselves from consideration um this year for their uh for their release but you know you had some other snubs like meg the stallion wasn't nominated Nicki minaj wasn't nominated chloe chloe and hallie yeah they weren't nominated uh rosalia wasn't nominated even though she's been nominated for some latin grammys just some big artists who people expected to see some type of nomination from summer walker didn't get anything yeah summer walker was a big one especially on social media yeah uh, that was crazy because her album did really really well so we'll see what happens delora but are you excited are you gonna watch are you curious to see who's gonna host isn't it gonna be trevor again it's I don't I didn't know if it was announced who was hosting again. Is it him oh, again? That's a great point. He's done it in the past and with him leaving the Daily Show, he may not want to do it again. Um yeah, you're right. I don't know. Well, we'll <gasps> see. Maybe Z Way. Z Way needs to host something. I said by that. The way. I would love to see her host something. Golden would Globes, even though I don't know if they have black people <laughs> on their jury yet, but I would love to see her host something. something. I would love to see it. Just for the outfit changes alone. I'm just curious. Exactly. Yeah. That would be exciting and fun. So guys, that's all we got for you today. We went a bit bit longer because we hadn't been together in a little bit and we hadn't been with you guys for a little bit. So we hope you enjoy. Delora, what are we recapping for the people next week for the week of Thanksgiving? Well, we are recapping a beautiful story about love family and food Mm -hmm. from scratch mini series available on netflix delora trying to have y'all crying in y'all pasta that's all i can say ashley (laughs) trying to get y'all emotional if you have not checked this series out be sure to check it out. Zoe Saldana will give you all of the feels, okay? And this is actually based off of a true story. So it is on Netflix. True story. Available 10 episodes, right? 10? Eight. Eight episodes. Felt like 10 because of the emotion. Eight episodes. It was a lot. It was a lot in those short eight episodes. <laughs> I say short being very facetious, but yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. All right, guys. Well, again dropping that episode for you next week then we're taking a break for thanksgiving we hope that you enjoy your time with your loved ones and eat some real good food eat some real real good food so and cherish the time with one another absolutely so we'll see you guys then be blessed bye